Hey yo, what's good everybody? It's your boy Matthew Maley for MatthewMaley.com. Well, got the jersey on. It's time to do another NFL playoff recap as well as look forward to the next round of the playoffs. Give a little predictions and uh, go from there. So, first off, I um, want to do a little wrap up from last week. Um, uh, it's actually, usually I do them right on Sunday as soon as the games end, but um, I wanted to actually get a little bit more information in terms of next week's games um, and really look at the lines and see how I feel about them, to be quite honest. Um, so, I, this is actually, this video, instead of being done on Sunday, is actually being done on Wednesday night. So, a little bit more time for your boy to, to think of some stuff and figure out exactly who he's going with. But first, got to do a recap of the games. Um, some great games this past weekend. Some great action. And uh, sadly, I was a little bit off. But um, just to refresh y'all's memory, my picks were the 49ers. I had them winning 23-20. to 20. I had the Patriots winning 23 to 17. I had the Ravens winning 23 to 14. And I had the Packers winning 21 to 14. So I ended up winning three out of the four games. Um, the Packers being the only one that, that didn't win. But um, definitely was off a little bit by the, by the scores. Uh, first off, we'll start with the 49ers game, um, which was, in my opinion, and I think anybody's, was the best game of the weekend. Um, back and forth drama. And just when you when you thought Drew Brees did it again, Alex Smith, as Boomer would say, Alex Smith <laughs> came out of nowhere and had probably, I mean, was responsible for one of the best moments of the 2011 NFL season, and that was the game-winning touchdown to Vernon Davis, um, the much maligned, much doubted, much often in the doghouse of Vernon Davis, and I know it's been talked about nonstop, but I still got to touch on it. The fact that in three years, he goes from performing so poorly, he's pulled out of a game in the middle of it by his then coach, Mike Singletary, sent to the showers, and then berated after the game in his, in his coach's press conference, saying that he needs winners, not him, uh, to, to then being... The star, uh, it's just amazing to me and really a testament for hard work. You know what, he coming out, you know, when he was drafted, he really felt like his, his talent was going to be, in my opinion, again, was, was going to be enough to carry him along and, you know, it had to go through some hard times. So shout out to Vernon Davis, who had an amazing game, ended up with uh, seven catches for 180 yards and two touchdowns. By far his biggest game, he's, he said, by far his biggest catch at the end of the game there. Um, and Alex Smith actually had a really good game as well. He uh, went 299, 24 for 42 with three touchdowns. Um, Gore had a little bit of a shaky game, but it was so, uh, it, the, the game was just crazy. It was back and forth and back and forth. So there really was a lot of passing in it. Um, and Gore ended up only having 13 carries for 89 yards. Breeze, on the other hand, um, Scored 18 points in the in the fourth quarter and got them there essentially, but their defense just couldn't hold the 49ers coming back, coming down. Um, Gore and I'm sorry, Breeze ended up 40 out of 63. Wow, um, 63 for 462 yards and four touchdowns. One of which was to Colston, who had nine catches for 136 yards, um, and Chris Ivory was the leading rusher with nine carries for 23 yards. Um, they were constantly running uh, multiple backs in there. The very first possession, um, I believe it happened before I was awake, but I think it was the first possession, um, Pierre Thomas got laid out, um, helmet to helmet hit, but it was a legal hit, um, and fumbled the ball and actually never came back to the game after that, concussion symptoms, whatever. So they were down him, um, and Sproles had a couple decent runs, but... For the most part, San Francisco's defense just looked really good. I mean, crazy ball hawking. The both Smiths um, just coming off the edges like nuts. I, I mean, Patrick Willis was playing like a beast. Number 53, I don't know who it is, but he was playing like a beast. I saw his number more constantly around the ball than anybody. Um, so shout out to the 49ers. I mean, I picked them to win. I did pick it to be 23-20, to 20, but... Whatever, 36-32 is close too. <laughs> hey, I picked three, it ended up four. 
Granted, it was a way higher scoring game than I was planning, but whatever. So, shout out to the 49ers. Um, shout out to Coach Harbaugh. I'm a big fan of him. So, um, you know, impressive what bringing Jim Harbaugh in will do for the team. I mean, to, to go from, you know, last year being an eh team to one one away from the Super Bowl really shows how much buying into a coach's system really helps. Um, so shout out to them. Shout out to shout out to them definitely. That was that was crazy. Um the night game on Saturday, if you can even call it a game, was the Patriots versus the Broncos. And uh this game was pretty much over before it even started, to be quite honest. The final line on it was forty five to ten. We turned it off um pretty much about three minutes in into the uh to the third quarter. Cause there just really wasn't anything to watch. Brady officially broke the TD record in the first half. Um, he threw six scores, right? Yeah. Or he throws no. He threw five scores in the first half because four was tied for the record. So he threw a fifth one just for funsies. Um, three of them went to Rob Gronkowski. This dude is just nuts. The fact that he's so huge, six seven, like two seventy. He's damn near unguardable, honestly. I mean, he, you can't cover him. He ended up having 10 catches for 145 yards and three touchdowns. Um, Brady ended up going 26 for 34, 363, and six TDs. Oh, yeah, and the other tight end, yeah, Aaron Hernandez. Oh, yeah, he was their leading rusher with five carries for 61 yards. Ridiculous. Um, by the end of the first quarter, it was 14 to nothing Patriots. But by halftime, it was 35 to seven. So there was no Tebow time to come back from that one. Um, Tebow actually ended up going nine for 26, again under 50 percent, uh, for 136 yards, no touchdowns. Um, McGay he had 17 uh, carries for 76 yards and a touchdown, and Demetrius Thomas um, had six six receptions for 93 yards. So. If you remember my, my prediction video, I actually said that this was a scary game to me because it could either be to where the Broncos would squeak out a game like they did against the, uh, the uh, Steelers, or they could give up 41 points. Well, they gave up 45 points, so I was a little bit close on it. Um, definitely thought that the Patriots were going to win, but I didn't think it was going to be that dominating, uh, especially after how badly the Patriots beat them the first go around. I really thought that the Broncos were going to step it up a little bit more. They didn't. Um, I do got to give a little bit of a shout out to to Tebow. It just was reported actually that in the the third quarter he had a uh, I guess when he was tackled it broke one of his ribs. Um, I think it punctured his lung and caused him to be like bleeding inside, building up fluid, tore cartilage, like. Pretty amazing that he was able to go out and finish finish the game. So, shout out to him. Um, definitely, I'm not a Tim Tebow fan at all. Though I was definitely cheering for him, um, so that they would have to be the ones who played the Ravens, assuming the Ravens would win. Um, which, of course, I always have faith in one of my two teams. Um, and I was really hoping that the Ravens would get a playoff game at home, or just a home game in general. Because I mean, if you look at how they were this season, they were eight and zero at home. They're three and four on the road. Four and four on the road. Yeah, four and four on the road. I think. Um, so I definitely was was really hoping that they that the Broncos would somehow pull it out, but no chance. And also, I, I don't know if, if if I should give a shout out to him or give a give a middle finger to him, but Bill Belichick had Tom Brady punt. Yeah, just showing off, and it was actually a pretty decent punt too. He, he ended up punting like forty five yards or something. It was nuts, but uh, kind of crazy that you would have your your star quarterback who's pretty much the reason that you guys are where you're at, punt the ball. Um, so, yeah, that was something. But uh, then we go on to the Sunday games, and the first game was the Texans versus the Ravens. Um, actually ended up being uh, closer than I expected. Just, well, I don't know, it was weird. I didn't get a chance to watch all the game. I, I woke up late for my alarm, sadly. I um, was up super late Saturday night, so I, I didn't get to see. Um, I got to see a little bit of the second second quarter, and I actually fell back asleep, and then I woke up after the, at halftime. But um, the they jumped out. The Ravens jumped out to a 17-3 lead in the first quarter. Um, but then 
didn't score again for the rest of the game until the fourth quarter when they kicked a field goal and ended up winning 20 to 13. Um, the Ravens scored 10 points in the second quarter to cut it to 17 to 13, and the Ravens were essentially able to hold a four point lead for the entire game. So shout out to their defense. Um, contrary to what Skip Bayless is saying, um, follow him on Twitter at Real Skip Bayless if you don't already. He was going in on my boy T Sizzle. Um, saying that Terrell Suggs wasn't even, you know, there. They didn't even show up, which I was wrong. I thought Terrell Suggs was going to have two sacks, and he didn't. Um, he ended up still, I don't think he had a bad game because he was still really giving pressure, but the fact that they weren't able to sack the quarterback one time, and it's a rookie quarterback, was really surprising to really everybody. Um, everybody was expecting it to be a lot, uh, a pretty, pretty much feeding season. For him and it wasn't so, but I was right with one of my other predictions. I predicted that Ed Reed would have an interception, and uh, sure enough, he did. Um, he ended up with one um, and also a really nice defensive play as well. Um, he ended up with hold on, let me see. Uh, it doesn't say he had the one interception, but he uh, it doesn't say how many balls he knocked down. He had one more. It was a great knockdown as well. Like he, it was on a hail mary pass at the end. But it also is where he got injured, so he's day to day right now, and hopefully everything's going to be okay. But the the sh shout out that I really want to give, just uh, period, is for Darius Webb, cornerback, ended up with two interceptions, um, and it it shows how the way you can play cornerback when you have Ed Reed covering top coverage because he was able to jump both routes and that's why he was able to get the interception um, on both times because he was able to jump and the one interception was just beautiful and actually the one wasn't a jump route the one the one was the other one wasn't but it was a beautiful beautiful interception um, I also was wrong um, saying that Arian Foster was gonna get shut down he ended up going off for um, a touchdown and hold on let me see how many yards here 132 yards, so he ended up doing pretty well. Um, TJ Yates um, ended up going 17 for 35, 184 yards and three interceptions, no touchdown. Um, got a little defense there. Flacco ended up going 14 for 27, 176 yards, two touchdowns, um, which, yeah, people were on him again, but you know what? At the end of the day, he did his job. Also, people are getting on Ed Reed, saying that Ed Reed is talking mess about him, whatever. I didn't really take it as that. Um, he did, you know, Ed Reed's comment was that there were times that the defense had Ed Reed, sh um, <clears throat> sorry, had Joe Flacco shaken, and then he wasn't managing that very well, which I don't personally look at that as like, a, oh, he's calling him out, he's calling out his quarterback, like everybody else on ESPN does. I see it as more of like a motivation, um, and also a shout-out to the Texans' defense. Um, more, But also, that's just my opinion. Um, well, you know, who knows what it really is. Also, Anquan Bolden had uh, four catches for 73 yards and a touchdown. Um, he was targeted eight times. We caught four of them. But the, the catch of the game went to Lee Evans. Yeah, Lee Evans, Mr. Baltimore, you know, I'm mean, sorry, Mr. Buffalo uh, wideout who used to go from having in fantasy a 30-point game to a two-point game to a 35-point game to a zero-point game. Seriously, Lee Evans burned me three straight years. I don't care if he becomes the next Jerry Rice. He will never be on one of my fantasy football teams ever again. Dead serious. <laughs> it is that serious. But um, but he had an amazing catch. One-handed grab with his left hand. Beautiful, beautiful catch. Um, also, in terms of the rest of the defense, um, Ray Lewis had eight tackles. Um, solid, solid game. Um, Ed Reed had six tackles. Suggs had six tackles as well. Um... One of them was for a loss. Um, yeah, everybody else, like Haloti Nata had three. Everybody else had pretty solid games. I mean, nobody was huge. Um, also said that um, that Cushing was going to have a really good game. Him and J.J. Watt both did. Um, he ended up, J.J. Uh, Watt had 12 tackles, two and a half sacks, three tackles for loss, and three QB hits. Brian Cushing had 11 tackles. Um... So, shout out to both of them. Both of them were beasts. I guess I made the wrong call in terms of who's going to get the two sacks. My bad. But uh, overall, I had predicted that game was going to be 23 to 14. Ravens winning ended up being um, derp, uh, 20 to 13. So, I wasn't too far off. 
kind of close. <laughs> but uh, finally, we go to the last game, which is that of the Giants versus the Packers. And this game, I had said, scared me. Uh, it was another one that could go either way. It could either turn into a shootout or it could end up being a defensive struggle. And it ended up being a defensive struggle for the first quarter and a half and then kind of blew up after that. Um, shout out to Eli Manning. He ended up uh, passing for 330 yards on 21 of 33 passing for three touchdowns. Um, two of the touchdowns went to Hakeem Nix, who had seven catches for 165 yards. One of them was a lot like the, uh, the excuse me, the playoff, I mean the Super Bowl play. He caught it up against his, his helmet when he came down on a, I had the hiccups. Um, on a Hail Mary to end the half, which I thought was a ballsy play by Tom Coughlin because they were technically in field goal range. And Tom Coughlin usually isn't a guy to be ballsy. He's usually pretty by the book. But uh, I was impressed by that, that they went for it. And honestly, nobody picked up Knicks for about the last 10 yards going into the to the end zone. And he had a, he had an easy catch by easy catch. Um, so... Congrats, you know, like they, they really came out and played a good game. I didn't think the Giants were going to win, and they did. I had this game 21 to 14, the Packers, thinking that the Packers would be able to take it in the end, but it ended up 37 to 20. The Giants won, and it really wasn't even a game after halftime. Even though it was only 20 to 10 after halftime, there was just something about it that that Aaron Rodgers just didn't look comfortable. And when you have the the big blue line coming at you like they did. I understand that. Uh, my, my prediction was actually 250 for three touchdowns. He ended up throwing 260 for two touchdowns, um, one of which was the driver with three catches for 45 yards. Um, but really, there wasn't much running game on either side, to be quite honest. Um, it ended up, the, the biggest thing was the turnovers. Um, they ended up, it was a four to, four to one ratio. The, um, yeah, they, the Packers ended up giving up four turnovers. Which, you're not going to win a game giving up four turnovers. Same thing that happened with, with the Saints game. They gave up five turnovers. I mean, that's not going to win the game, period. So, ended up, shout out to the Giants. I really did not see that coming at all. But, it, great game. I mean, I thought it could happen. I didn't think it would happen. And you guys proved me wrong again. What's new? But, um, definitely big shout out to the Giants. Your defense is playing running on all cylinders. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what happens this next week. So speaking of next week, we are now officially to the champion or the conference championship round. This is going for the Super Bowl, baby. So in one corner, we have the Ravens versus the Patriots. And in the other corner, we have the Giants versus the 49ers. So here we go. Both games are on Sunday. Um, Ravens starts at 3 p.m. Eastern, so I don't have to wake up too early. Giants game um, starts at 6.30 Eastern. The current line, I'll do this, the Ravens game because it's early. Current line, um, wow, it's now New England by 9. I thought when it started it was by 7.5. So, or maybe I, met, maybe I read it wrong and it was by 9.5. I don't know. Somebody knows, tell me. What did the line open at? Because I thought I seen it as 7.5. Which, if it's up to 9, people really don't have faith in my Ravens. Um, I think this is going to be a tough game. And I think the Ravens definitely can do it. But they have to perform. They have to let Joe Flacco throw and just go after that horrible defense that New England's known for this season. They've not had a good defense. Neither run nor pass. So I really think that the Ravens just have to attack it. Yes, they can sit back and rely on their defense, but they shouldn't. They should not rely on that. That should be a, an assist, if you will. They should be able to go out there with the offense, get Ray Rice going quickly. Even if you got to work some small screens, some little dump-offs, just get Ray Rice going, and then very quickly get Bolden in the game. I don't care if it's just little five-yard hitch routes. I don't care if it passes to the flat. Get something going so that we don't have to rely on the defense. That's my two cents. Overall, I can't not pick my Ravens, even though that I think this is going to be the biggest test they've had all year because the Patriots do look good. But of course I'm picking my Ravens. You already know. I'm taking it 24-17 to 17 
Yeah, I said it's 17. And I know if I told Brady that, he'd say, huh, you're going to hold me to 17 points? Not likely. Just like he did against the Giants in the Super Bowl. But that's what I'm picking. I think it's going to be 24-17. to Ravens going to win. I think Ray Rice is going to have a big day, two touchdowns. Maybe not a big day in terms of yardage. I think he's going to have two touchdowns and probably 85, 90 yards. Um, and then I think the, the rest is just going to go to Flacco, um, who's going to do a good enough job at managing the game. And uh, we'll see what happens. So that's my pick. I think Tom Brady's going to throw three interceptions. I know that doesn't usually happen. But I'm sorry. No, I think he's going to turn the ball over three times. I think he's going to throw two interceptions and get sacked once for a fumble and lose it. So I think he's going to have. So I think the, the, the Ravens are going to win the uh, turnover battle three to one. And um, I also am predicting a pick six. Um, or some some type of defensive touchdown. Might not be a pick six. Might not be a, rum, a fumble run back. Might be a, a punt return or a kickoff return. But I'm predicting a, a defensive touchdown in this game. So there you have it. First, if it happens. Um, and then the next game we got is the Giants versus the 49ers in San Francisco. Oh, forgot to mention. The Ravens are having to go up to Foxborough to play. That's one thing that's really scary. Just because the Ravens haven't lost a game at home. But they haven't won too many on the road. So uh, then we go out to San Francisco for the afternoon game, evening game, if you will. And uh, this is going to be a fun game. Giants playing very well. Great defense. Powerful offense. Eli Manning looking good. Except when he does a little Eli Manning face. Other than that, he's almost as bad as the Duncan face. Almost, not quite. So you've got that, that offense going up against the defense of the, the 49ers who just limited the even better offensive Saints team last week. So I really think it's going to be a great game. Uh, I think this is actually going to be the better game than the New England Ravens game. I think the, the Ravens game is going to be somewhat I, I just really think their defense is going to step it up in the second half and really lock it down. I think most of the scoring is going to be the first half, personally. Um, but this game, I think, is going to end up really being a tight game all the way to the end, just like it happened with the Saints. The line is San Francisco by three. Um, I actually I am going to bet on the New England game simply because I think the Ravens are going to win, and even if they, I'm not going to say it, I'm not going to say the L word, I don't think it would happen by nine points. Um, so I'm definitely going to bet that game. But this game is by three, which is, I don't really like that, um, personally. If it was two and a half, I'd bet it. But I see this game hitting the, I, I see this game hitting the line exactly, being a 30-27 to 27 game, or maybe a 27-24. Actually, yeah, we're going to go 27-24, 49ers. So that's right. My pick for the Super Bowl is a Jim versus John Harbaugh Bowl. Harbaugh Bowl 2.0. So... Won't get into my overall picks in terms of Super Bowl because we've got to see what happens first. But there you have it. So I am picking the 49ers to knock off the Giants. And I'm picking the Ravens to knock off those punk made. Oh, I hate the Patriots. I hate them. So there you got it. So let me know what you guys think of my picks. I'm sure all the Patriot fans out there are going to come out there and call me crazy. I'm sure all the Giants fans out there are going to come out and call me crazy. Shout out to my boy D. I'm sorry, homie. Gotta go, gotta go with my heart. Well, not my heart, but my gut. And I just don't like the Giants. Even though I love JPP. He's my, he's my dude. He's a beast. I just don't like you guys. So, but if y'all win, I'll, I'll, I will. I will. If, and it's funny. This is what I think I think is going to happen. Either I think it's going to end up being the Ravens versus the, the 49ers. Or I don't think either one of those teams are going to win. And it's going to be a repeat of the Super Bowl. And I don't know why. I don't. I feel like that if the Ravens win, the 49ers are going to win. But I feel like if the Patriots win, then, then the Giants are going to win. I don't know why. That's just what's like going in my head. So who knows? Maybe that's what's going to happen. We'll see. But uh, definitely let me know what you guys think of my picks and my wrap-up video. Let me know if you like it, hate it, whatever. I um, apologize. I'm long-winded, as you guys know, from viewingmaxmaley.com. But uh, thanks as always for checking out my videos. Much appreciated. I'm sad. We only got a couple more weeks of, uh, of, fan of football this year. So I'm a little bit sad about that. But I'm just happy we were able to get a season. Because it really wasn't looking like we was going to. So shout out to everybody for getting that working. But uh, as always, thanks for checking out my videos. Um, if you'd like, I wouldn't, you know, you don't mind, go check out the rest of them. If you're up on MatthewMailey.com right now, click the video blog tab. Check them all out right there. Or you can double click the video, which will take you over to YouTube, where you can watch it on YouTube. If not, go to YouTube.com, search for Matthew Maley Poker, at which point you, you can subscribe to my channel, so you'll be first to know when new videos pop up, as well as like the video, maybe throw me a comment, let me know who you think is going to win, and of uh, my picks. 
Of course, you can follow your boy up on Twitter, at Matthew Maley. And as always, like your boy's page on Facebook. Search for Matthew Maley Poker. So, till the next video, I am signing off. Peace out, y'all.